This is the second video in my fluid tutorial using Blender. Um, in today's video I'm going to try to address some of the static appearance of the fluid and just its basic appearance in single frame renders. Since we're going to be doing renders we're going to need to number one call up our camera and set that up. So I'll bring my camera into the frame grab it up, move it into a more reasonable location by backing it off and move my lighting around a bit as well. Look at that from the top. Place this off to the side. Perhaps duplicate that light. Put one on to this side so I have enough light. Select my camera. Go into camera view mode and pan around so that I can see the scene. That should be good. Also since I'll be doing some rendering I'll need to go into the render tab settings and change some of them. I'll change my directory to the desktop. change the size. I'm going to use an unstandard size but one that will hopefully play well with my video capture utility. Hopefully this size will display well on a YouTube video. Um, while we're in this tab we'll quickly glance at the default settings for the frames as well. Now, I mentioned in the first video that Blender will generate 250 frames of video in an initial baking and in our default settings it will generate those frames to cycle at 25 frames per second in our video so it's a little bit of simple math we know that 250 frames divided by 25 frames per second is equal to 10 seconds of video That'll be relevant in our settings later, so we'll come back to that. I'm going to change my output from JPEG to an AVI codec. And I believe that's all the settings in this tab. And we'll come back to the relevance of 250 frames at 25 frames per second, probably in a later video but it is actually an important thing. So we're ready to render a frame and we'll do that really quickly. Have a look at that. Uh, hopefully that'll display well on my YouTube video. Um, what I'm seeing here is a fluid that looks terrible. <laughs> um, it has a lot of faces and a big unsightly shadow underneath the fluid where it's not even resting properly on the floor and there's just a far too blocky and too many faces showing in that image and well our fluid needs a lot of work before we do anything though I'm gonna frame forward using arrow keys to where the block is gone and see what it looks like when the block is fallen away This way we can see what the image looks like later on as the fluid is spilled down a bit and as you can see there's still a lot of vertices and faces showing the fluid is clearly off of the ground so obviously it doesn't look very good with these settings. Now one thing to comment on is there's no way for me to set up a fluid to look good in one video. Um, I'm going to cut out from my video and see how much time I have left and determine which settings I can go over today in this video. Well, I have about enough time to cover two things we can do to increase the quality of our fluid. The first thing to do would be to increase the resolution. 50 is a pretty low resolution. Um, I really don't try to ramp up my resolutions too high. They use up a lot of memory and I found that 
trying to go too high, I encountered a lot of errors. Um, the program would crash. I'm not sure if I was running into program bugs or system limitations, but um, I don't have the greatest computer in the world, but I don't often run into system limitations, and this is the first software that has actually really been able to press my computer very much, so not really sure if I'm on a limitation or just running into program limitations itself. That's unclear to me. So with the resolution set there to 100, I'm going to bake that. We'll have a look at what happens. Number of vertices and lines doubles, of course, because we doubled the resolution. Escape out of the bake because we don't have time to watch things bake, and the bake is going to increase in time with the resolution. It's not going to move a lot slower. And we'll render the frame, have a look at what that looks like. As you can see, the fluid looks a little more round, but it's still showing a lot of indications of faces. And the vertices and faces are showing a lot more clearly. Another thing that's very evident is the size of the shadow that was underneath the fluid has declined drastically and for the better. And the fluid is clearly sitting closer to the floor. Let's have a look at the wireframe and see why that is. I'll go back to the first frame. With the old resolution of 50, in the first frame the fluid was sitting clearly above this line of the floor. And it was actually above it by a small amount. Now with the resolution of 100, it's sitting clearly inside of the floor, which is desirable. Um, if we zoom in a bit, and look along the edge of the fluid it comes down and curls around and has a little lip and then falls into the floor out of sight out of mind and this is the reason why I like to work in the higher resolution sustain longer baking times for the sake of as I'm adding objects to my scene and having them interact with the fluid I'm adding them into accurate locations where I can have the fluid sitting slightly inside where I need it to to increase the quality of the image and the way that it comes across in the video. So this is the reason why I like to work in higher um, resolutions and I could press the resolution a little bit higher and there's another setting to be changed as well but we're gonna have to do that in another video. For now I'm gonna do something that should be fairly obvious and you know our image is still looking pretty blocky and has a lot of lines showing and the obvious thing to do is to enter the edit buttons and set the object to smooth because that's something we haven't done yet and we'll render well frame forward a bit to where we have our blob and render that and have a look see Now the rendered image is starting to shape up a bit. There's still some indications of the low resolution that we're working with and there's hintings of faces and vertices in those edges and those will become more evident when the fluid's in motion. But overall the appearance of our fluid is shaped up quite a bit in those two steps alone. Um, in the next video we'll address some more of the fluid quality and do what we can to increase that and look at the effects that has on baking and rendering times which we want to try to keep those reasonable and I like to keep them within uh, practical practical settings that I can render at home on my home computer um, I don't know if I have very much time left so I'll sign off here and come back in the next video